<laughs> all right, so the, the first, first of all, I think what I'm, what I'm gonna show you today, I'm, I'm gonna do this in two parts, all right? The first part will be this class, the second part will be the second class. But one of the things I wanna start with is that whatever I show you here today could definitely be applied to any scenario, any, any setup that you might have. So, you know, obviously I'm playing the gear that I play because this is what I like, what I gravitated to and also to what I helped design with these amazing companies. But if you don't have this gear, or you're say using um, a, a plugin, like an Archetype Petrucci or something like that, or if you're using a Quad Cortex or an Axe FX or anything else, I think what I'm gonna sh show you still applies to all the situations, all right? So the first thing is how I think about it, and I'm gonna say it's how I see the sound, and I specifically use that word see and not hear, because I look at my guitar sound as an image. That's how I see it, that's, that's what I go for. And the best way to explain it is to kind of give you some examples. So picture, um, let's say picture a painting of, of uh, some sort of scene, like let's say, let's say it's uh, the beach. Right? And if you picture a beautiful painting of, of the beach, you're gonna have, you know, what's in the in the front, you know, maybe the sand and some little leafy things. You're gonna have the ocean and you're gonna have the sky with the sun and some birds and stuff like that. That's a complete picture, right? If that was a guitar sound, it'd probably be an awesome guitar sound if it was done right. It would be like everything would be balanced, you'd be seeing all the things you wanna see. Now, if that was a guitar sound, but the painting was all beach, really close up, something would be out of whack, right? It would be like, I don't know, it, you know, maybe the equivalent is that it's, it would sound too dark or too bassy or whatever. Let's say it was like really off and the sun was way too close and the perspective was, it was off. It would seem too bright, right? That's how I think about sound. So the clean. I kind of mix it with the clean sound. And that's the sound I would use on, you know. The second sound is, of course, the one I was talking about, the main rhythm sound. And usually, uh, and this is actually, I guess, lesson number one, I see people make a mistake with this all the time. So it might be a taste thing, but I'm just gonna put it out there. I think the crunch sound is your main rhythm sound, and the style of music I play is more metal, right? So I'm kind of coming from the metal perspective. If you don't play metal, maybe this doesn't apply. But for me, that sound should be dry. No, don't put reverb on there. That is mistake, no, no, number one. No reverb, no uh, compression, no noise gate. I know a lot of people like to use noise gates. I don't use them because I think it kind of, um, I think it plays with the dynamics, the natural dynamics that the amplifier has. But you know, if you're playing a style that's very stop and go and you need a real heavy sound and you need to have that gate, I'll let it pass. <laughs> but me personally, I like to set the amplifier so it's like on the verge of feeding back and then I pull it back a little bit. <laughs>
Okay? So you see the way it's like stop on a dime dry, right? That, the gank, as we call it. <laughs> you want to have the gank. So if you, if you guys are adding you know, reverb, it's, it's just gonna, it's gonna make that muddy, basically. And the third so sound, now this is where you do want to add the schmutz, if you're, uh, in live on Long Island, you know that word, you want to add the schmutz. Um, this is where you want your, your creamy, soaring sort of sound. And again, you know, visually, um, I always look at this sound, I think I told this to Tosin, um, my, my image is that I'm standing on top of a mountain and uh, I'm playing a solo, the wind is in my hair and there's all these like, as I'm playing guitar, with every note, little birds are flying out of my guitar <laughs> and like just surrounding me, right? <laughs> that's, that's the lead sound that I tried to go for. difference between the three different sounds, right? I, I'm going to take that same chorus I played before, that pedal, it's going to go in front of this distorted sound, listen to that. sound like it did before. I actually think it sounds kind of cool. It's interacting with the distortion. It's doing a certain thing. Now, listen to the same thing, right? Our dry sound with the chorus in the effects loop. So remember, now the a chorus is going to take that distorted sound. It's not going to interact with the distortion or anything. It's just going to apply the effect, excuse me, apply the effect to the sound. So here we go. So here it is without anything. So, you know, what do you guys think? Now, what's your what's your opinion on the two again? <laughs> wow, everybody's going to. So he says one. You're saying two. You're saying one. You're saying two. It depends on the song. It depends on the application. It also depends on your taste. He's saying one. So this is really great. I love this. I love that there are different um, opinions because everybody's different, and your application is going to be different. And you know what? I use both of them, to be honest with you. It depends on what I'm doing, right? If I'm, if I'm doing something like I just played where there's these big chords, I'm going to use two because that's going to make this huge sound. If I'm doing something, you know, like last night with Zach, um, I was actually doing this. I was using a, a Waza, a Boss Waza CE2, which is a chorus pedal, but like with the rate really high to kind of get like that Zach vibe. So that, that sounded like this. So here's a dry. <laughs> that's a cool sound too, you know? Um, 
So it depends on what, what you're actually doing. And you could even use a sound like that on single notes uh, as well. than doing that whole after chorus effect. Um, let's experiment a little bit more. Let's go back to uh, a clean sound. Let's see. Check this out. Let me just check my tuning. Um, any questions so far about that stuff? Or the, yeah, go ahead. You talked about the effects of what exactly is that? Okay. He's asking exactly, what exactly is an effects loop? So, not all amplifiers, but most amplifiers, especially the more modern ones, have what's called an effects loop. So, what you'll see, besides what's on the front of the amplifier, like, you know, usually you have drive or gain, volume, treble, bass, mid, presence. On the back of the amplifier, you might see something that says send and return. Yeah. Are you ever using delay in front of the, uh, like the Van Halen trick? Right. Uh, it, in any songs or anything like that? Right. Do you ever use that? So, it, Ola is asking about the delay and, and where I put it. So, I think back in the day, I would listen to Rush albums and like, I feel like they'd have an analog delay pedal or a Van Halen, like you said, yeah. and, and the delay would go in front of the amp and basically, purposely interact with the distortion and create a certain sort of sound. And it might have been because those amplifiers didn't have effects loops. I don't know, maybe that was the only way to do it. Um, when I was younger, I would do that to get that sound. Uh, I don't do that as a normal practice, though. So. And I was actually, if we can find a delay pedal for part two, I was gonna demonstrate that to show people what that sounds like. It's a whole different sound. It's not the birds on top of the mountain thing. This is like, this is something completely different where it's like repeating and distorting and it's a certain kind of thing. It's a cool sound as well. I think it's more retro probably, um, but I'll demonstrate. If we can find a delay pedal, uh, I'll demonstrate that. Like, you have one? Yeah. Beautiful, can you bring it? Anybody that has one, bring that. You have one too? There we go, look at that.